Welcome to another informational video on Handsphere 4.0. Each of my videos will start with this same short section on what is Handsphere 4.0. Well, as a Handsphere 4.0 user and a licensed amateur radio operator, I look at it this way. Handsphere 4.0 is to ham radio what an advanced flight simulator is to flying. It's a simulation, but it's an incredibly realistic simulation. Handsphere 4.0 includes simulations of how the sunspots affect the ionosphere using current real sunspot numbers. It, it simulates the multiple paths that signals take through the atmosphere, getting from one location to another. And it even simulates the behavior of different types of antennas. You use all of these things in Handsphere 4.0 as you experienced an incredibly realistic simulation of ham radio. When you're trying to find activity, one way to do that is to use the uh, cluster, which is available here via the logbook button. In real life and in 4.0, the only way someone appears in a cluster is if someone has actually spotted them. In other words, they've heard them on that frequency and reported that fact. So uh, here I am on um, 14260, and uh, even though he's not transmitting right now, I can actually hear on the uh, IDC vertical antenna, I can hear uh, uh, Sam from Oman. Now, uh, it turns out that I don't need to spot him because several other people already have spotted him on that frequency and um, why that happens I'll I'll talk about in a second but let's just pretend for an instance that I was hearing Sam call CQ on this frequency then and I could tell that he wanted to talk to people um, I might say um, I would go to the send DX spot button and my opinion is that what you should put here is uh, his uh, signal report so let's say he was five and three and where um, you are reporting from so that people that look at this can tell uh, learn something about propagation from your spot and then I would click send and it would uh, put it in the cluster now it may not update the cluster right away but this green R here is uh, kind of a refresh button and it brings up the latest things so if you're feeling like you're not seeing the latest you can hit that um, now uh, should I have spotted Sam? Maybe. It could be argued that I should have because none of these previous spots uh, of, of Sam are from the western part of the United States. So there's no information here in the cluster telling other operators in the western part of the U.S. that there's this station in Oman that's currently uh, being heard in the western U.S. However, um, you'll notice that there's a lot of repeated spots of Sam that uh, probably don't need to be done because they're reporting him from the same regions of the world and there's a reason that uh, that there's more spot activity going on right now than is needed so first of all spotting is very important uh, and uh, so I don't want to discourage the use of spotting at all however there's more spotting of uh, repeated spotting of uh, station than is needed, and there's two reasons for that. One is, is that, and this is completely understandable. Uh, operators believe that if they spot this station, then their call sign will show up in the cluster, and that station will see that they're spotting them and know that this station is trying to reach them. But there's something uh, that's not at all intuitive that happens in the cluster to avoid it being used as a chat box or as a way to um, to uh, you know nag stations to to change to other bands or to uh, try to get them to call you um, and that is that you do not see uh, your own spots meaning you do not see the spots that were made uh, of you so Sam in Oman doesn't see these spots in the cluster he might see them show up over here where it says A41KL has been spotted but he doesn't see um, who did the spotting and he doesn't see them here and the reason for that is that the whole purpose of spotting is to alert stations that someone is on well Sam doesn't need to be alerted that he's on he knows he's on um, and so 
but that is a relatively recent change and the word hasn't gotten out so uh, there's a lot of spiting that happens to basically say hey hello DX station I'm here um, the other reason it happens and this is probably the majority of it and again it's it I don't uh, uh, blame anyone for this happening is that it, the easiest way to log is to have something show up in the cluster so you can see that uh, Sam is spotting stations because then he can just click on a time and log them so if I had just talked to Sam uh, I wouldn't need to spot him because he's already been spotted on this frequency and then I can click on the time and it auto fills out my logbook with his call his name the frequency we're on the mode and a default report um, I did in fact talk to Sam a little bit ago and I gave him a 5.5 so I would have just changed this to 5.5 and I could log him quite easily now again uh, and again don't forget the green R it's kind of the reset take you back to the cluster again though if someone else has already spotted a station on the frequency you're on then you don't need to um, spot them in order to be able to log them uh, even if they've spotted quite a long time ago on that frequency you can still click on that time and they'll go into your logbook with the current time but um, you know some people would rather that the cluster not get filled up with spots that are just being used for logging uh, and so what if you wanted to log someone by hand well as of right now today when you go when you click on logbook it doesn't fill in anything for you this Kelly tells me that for sure this will be changing it will autofill the frequency and the mode which of course is uh, very realistic because your transceiver knows what frequency you're on and it knows uh, what mode you're using um, so when I talked to Sam I didn't see any reason any need to spot him I could have just clicked on the time of uh, of someone else's spot and I could have done like I just showed you with the relatively easy way to log but I like to uh, practice um, and, and like I said ultimately this will be a lot easier because it will automatically fill in the frequency in the mode and it will automatically fill in the name if you w click log QSO it will uh, warn you that there's no name but it will automatically fill in the name for you at least that's the thought if it works like 3.0 does and in fact uh, the uh, trick of clicking log QSO after you've only put in the call sign and having it filling in the name in QTH does work and uh, despite the fact that I don't show that in the other parts of my videos it is uh, the easiest way to manually log so I would have put in uh, Sam's uh, call sign click log QSO it'll come up and warn me it'll say name missing but it fills in the name for me and the QTH over here in the comment and all I'm left with is the frequency and mode which I will show you uh, how I do those but what I did was I um, entered Sam by hand I put his call sign in here which ultimately is, is about all you'll need to do other than adjusting the signal report I filled in his name and I put in the frequency and this is a place where you can save a lot of time uh, I think the main reason people do the auto uh, logging uh, semi-automated logging is because they're afraid of putting in the wrong frequency well there are multiple ways to put in the frequency you can put it in at, in megahertz 14.260 whoops point period 260 all right it's got to be a period you can put it in in kilohertz so you can go 14260 with no period or comma or anything in fact you can even put in a period 00 if you're working partial kilohertz um, or the real excuse me for that the real time saving uh, uh, one is you can just put in the band 20 meters you'll notice I did this uh, for my last two contacts um, as near as I can tell I mean this is something direct from Kelly that this works and as near as I can tell it does work for getting uh, credited for the contact getting the QSL cards matched up and uh, and so this is what I've started doing um, and again to repeat uh, not too far in the future um, when you click on the logbook 
this stuff will be automatically filled in and then it'll be super easy to just log by hand and people won't need to do spots just to make logging easier. Um, and oh by the way I would have uh, filled in the mode too for single sideband. I could have put uh, upper sideband um, if I wanted because you'll see that that's the mode I'm in here right now is upper sideband. So that's uh, a little bit about the cluster. Uh, how you can use it to, uh, you can just click on the frequency that's shown here to go to that frequency. You'll notice that uh, now I'm on 14240. And, uh, and I can I hear a station in there. Uh, you can uh, use it to log by clicking on the time. Again, if someone else has logged a station on a certain frequency, you can just click on their entry. You don't need to spot that station too um, unless as I said, it's giving some useful information for you to be an additional spot of that station. And, uh, and then this is also your path to the logbook um, and, uh, and the ability to uh, fill out the rest of a, uh, information that was automatically entered or to enter it all by hand like I've been doing here recently.